Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I really hope you saw my unboxing and small teardown of the Jetson AGX Orin. That's where I cover a basic overview of the device, what it looks like, where all the ports are and so on. If you haven't seen that yet, I really recommend you check out that video before you watch this video. Why? Because this video is my full review. I've spent more time with the device, done some performance testing and so on, and this is what I found out. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so at the end of the video, I have a whole range of Jetson boards, starting down with the Jetson Nano, $59, $99, that kind of thing, depending on the exact configuration. And then they have different models that get more and more powerful, right until you get up to the high end. Now, the AGX Orin is a high-end NVIDIA machine learning device, and it has a matching price tag but it's designed for people who are designing things like factory automation uh, self-driving cars robots that kind of thing not something you could do on a 3d printer and have it kind of whizzing around on your kind of you know, dining room table we're talking about major industrial stuff that needs the kind of computing power to cope with all those things now taking that into consideration what is the agx orin well, like all of NVIDIA's Jetson boards, it's basically a module that you can then plug into your hardware design, whether that's your robot or your factory automation. And there are developer kits, and that's what I've got, that is a way of plugging that module into a carrier board. Then that carrier board gives you kind of outlets for USB and for Ethernet and for DisplayPort and that kind of thing. So some of the headline specs for the Orion module that you get inside the developer kit are 12 called A78 cores, that's called 64-bit, running at 2.2 gigahertz, and 2048 CUDA cores inside of the GPU, along with some other hardware accelerated stuff for machine learning, including some tensor cores, and that's all coupled with 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. Now the CUDA cores are based on the Ampere architecture and the Ampere architecture is the GPU architecture that uh, NVIDIA use in the kind of the GeForce uh, 30 series so the 3080 for example is based on the Ampere architecture along with all the other ones there in that 30 series and it's also what NVIDIA offer today when you're doing machine learning buying their machine learning pods for the data center. So taking a quick look at the CPU, the CPU has 12 uh, CPU cores, as I said, they each core includes 64K of uh, L1 cache for instructions and 64K of data cache, also at well L1, 256K of L2 cache. And like the Jensen AGX Xavier, each cluster has two megabytes of L3 cache. The maximum supported CPU frequency is 2.2 gigahertz. The 12 core uh, Jensen AGX Orion 64 enables almost 1.9 times the performance compared to the 8 core NVIDIA Carmel CPU that you found in the Jetson AGX Xavier. Now, if you notice, I did say up to 2.2 gigahertz. And the reason for that is that all the Jensen boards, including the Orin, can be configured in different power modes. So at its greatest, uh, best, highest power, this is a 60 watt device, but you can configure it at lower configurations. So it doesn't have to always be at that high power, just depends on what particular type of application you want to use it for. Now I've done some of my own performance testing using my thread test tool. You can find that in my GitHub repository. And this tool basically finds prime numbers over multiple multiple threads and I've tested it on four different devices. Let's have a quick look at those devices. First we've got the tried and trusted Raspberry Pi 4. It's a quad core Cortex A72 at 1.5 gigahertz and up to 8 gigabytes of RAM. Then next to that you've got the Jetson Nano which is a quad core Cortex A57 at 1.43 uh, gigahertz and that's got the 128 core NVIDIA Maxwell based uh, GPU running at 921 megahertz up to four gigabytes available in that one. Then you go higher up the scale, you've got the Jensen Xavier NX. I've got a review of that here on this channel. It's a six core NVIDIA Carmel CPU at 1.4 gigahertz. It's got uh, six megabytes of L2 cache and four megabytes of L3 cache. And that's of course using GPUs based on the Volta architecture, 384 CUDA cores in that one, plus 48 te uh, tensor cores and up to eight gigabytes of memory. And then finally, we've got the biggest of them all, the Jetson AGX Orin with the 12 Cortex-A 78 cores, three megabytes of L2 cache, six megabytes of L3 cache, and 2048 cores. So you can see a real uh, progression here 
from you know the Raspberry Pi and the Jetson Nano up through the Xavier and then here you've kind of got this top one which has got lots and lots of CPU cores and lots and lots of GPU cores up to 64 gigabytes of memory on some of the modules not in the development kit and this really is quite a beast so how does it perform in my simple CPU tests? Well, here's the graph showing you. Basically, I ran it with just one thread that will kind of show us the single thread performance, four threads, 10 threads, and 16 threads. Why many different types of threads? Because, of course, a quad core like the Jetson Nano will perform quite well, but when you add in more threads and you're gonna need more of them, then the Xavier and the Orin are gonna do even better. So here are the colors down there. The top one is the Nano, the purple one is the Pi 4, the yellow one is the Xavier NX, and the bottom one in blue is the AGX Orin. So what do we find? One thread, of course, shorter is better. What do we see here? A couple of interesting things is that the Pi 4 actually does pretty well here. It does better than the Jetson Nano and the Xavier Air NX, but of course it's completely uh, destroyed by the AGX Orin, which is clearly the fastest of the lot. Then when you go up to four cores, so you're now pushing the processors a bit harder and harder, the Nano is still the slowest there, Pi 4 and the Xavier NX are pretty much tied, but still a clear winner by quite a factor by the uh, AGX Orin. And we notice that between one core and four cores, AGX Orin says, well, I don't care. One core, four cores, I've got 12 cores. So, you know, you're not really asking me to do anything hard. In fact, that's still when you come to 10 cores, the same because it's got 12 cores. So now we can really see a difference. The Nano with its four cores is the slowest there. Then you've got the Pi 4, then the Xavier uh, NX, of course, it's got uh, six cores available there so it's doing much better there but still the AGX Orin half a second it takes to complete this test compared to over two and a half seconds for the Nano uh, because it's saying hey, 10 cores no problem I've got 12 of these you know what do you want from me only when I do it to 16 cores do we then see that it slightly takes a bit longer uh, than uh, half a second as it has to do that extra bit of work there to finish all the tasks but again a, by a huge factor much much faster than all the other boards and this is CPU only of course this is CPU only. Now the thing about performance is in the machine learning domain performance is actually equal to capabilities. Well why is that? Well in fact you can actually run machine learning tasks on just about anything even on microcontrollers there are some good uh, companies and projects on getting you know um, machine learning inference done on microcontrollers but it's all about how quickly and what you can process. So of course, if you run machine learning on a Raspberry Pi 4, and I've got a video about that uh, here on this channel, then it's gonna have a limitation to things like frame rate when you're dealing with the video, or how quickly it can recognize or do something with audio and so on. So on a Raspberry Pi 4, you're certainly not getting real time in the sense that it's 30 frames a second. There's less, which might be enough for an electronic doorbell or something, because you don't need to be recording the person coming to your door at 30 frames a second. If you're doing it at 15 frames a second, 10 frames a second, that's absolutely fine. But if you go up to the industrial level, if you go about automation in terms of self-driving cars or factory equipment, that kind of thing, then you're going to need to be able to do things in real time through multiple cameras, high definition video feeds, high definition stuff coming in from audio, LiDAR, other sensors, and so on. And so this is where performance really makes a difference. So when you move over to something like the Orin, uh, AGX Orin, then you're getting the capabilities to do things in real time and actually from multiple sensors. In fact, here is a demo of uh, people detection and face detection running on six full HD video streams simultaneously on the Orin uh, NX and it's running them at 30 frames a second. So you can imagine you have robot, you have factory automation, whatever it is you're doing, multiple cameras looking at different angles, and you want to start doing object detection, people detection, face detection, you want to see what's going on around you, this thing can handle it easily, 30 frames a second from six full HD video feeds. Now, according to NVIDIA, the AGX Orin delivers between three and five times the machine learning performance compared to the Jetson AGX Xavier. Here are some numbers that 
uh, NVIDIA have given out and I've tested these numbers myself on the Orin and basically the numbers that NVIDIA give you here are what the benchmark shows. So you can see a significant improvement in all of the different things here. So you've got all those different, these are different popular neural networks. Uh, PeopleNet was the one that was just used in that last demo I showed you about uh, protecting people in those uh, video streams. And you can see a significant uplift in performance. So if that is what is demanded by your uh, machine learning application it, at the scale that you're doing it, then obviously this is uh, the Orin is the board to go for. NVIDIA also supplied a demo of their Reva SDK. Now, Reva SDK is to do voice recognition and also text-to-speech using neural networks. And in this particular demo I'm about to show you, this is all running on the Orin board. Nothing is happening uh, out on the internet. It doesn't send anything up to any cloud servers to try to work out what was said. This is all happening directly, and I'm basically speaking into a headset with a microphone. And you can see here in this demo that the Orin is basically uh, understanding what I'm saying and turning it audio uh, into speech, into text. Hello, I am testing the voice recognition on this new NVIDIA single board computer. This is all running on the board itself, on the computer itself, and not using the internet for any kind of uh, translation or interpretation of the text. Before I go any further, I must say that Gary Explains is the best YouTube channel on the internet. The problem is the rest of the internet hasn't worked that out yet. OK, now I'm going to try to talk a bit faster and see whether this thing can keep up with me. Looking good so far. OK, that's it. See you in the next one. There are lots of other things that we could look at with this development kit. For example, there's that PCI Express slot that I haven't used at all yet. Apparently there is AV1 hardware accelerated encoding inside of the CPU of this uh, particular module. I haven't looked at that yet. And there may be other things that you're interested in. For example, disk IO, could it be a, set up as a, as a network attached storage, game emulation, you know, th there's even UEFI boot. Does that mean I could boot other operating systems on this other than the one that comes with it? These are all things that I could look into. So please do tell me in the comments below if any of those things sound interesting and I'll see if, it's, uh, if there's nothing interest, I'll make a video. Okay, so before we wrap up, let's just talk about the different Orin modules that are available. Basically, there are four. There's the Orin NX series and there's the AGX Orin series, starting with six cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, 1024 GPU cores, right up to the 64 gigabyte version with the 12 uh, cores for the CPU, 2048 cores for the GPU and the modules these are cost different things. So this depends on what application you're building, your factory automation or, or, or whatever. But the development kit comes with a version that's got 12 CPU cores, but it's only got the 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it's like the top range one there, but with 32 gigabytes of RAM. The actual development kit will set you back about $2,000 at the moment. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Orin uh, Jetson module. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then please do stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And also I have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. No spam. No, 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 no spam. But you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.